Um, right. Okay. Here is the pile of dead bits from this TV. Um, quite a few valves. Actually, quite a few valves, and yeah, the problems they gave me, yeah, a few of them kind of had me scratch me for a little while. I, to be honest, I should have actually tested all the valves before I even started, because I probably could save myself half the bother with trying to fault find. But in some ways, you don't really learn by doing it that way. You're... It's all part of the fun of turning old TVs too, so it's what I also enjoy the most. Um, yeah, these are these four section filter caps, and um, so there's the values on them there. So we've got 100, 200. 50 and 25 or 300 volt rated and there's two of them in the set and what was ironic is both of them the values had all literally halved the 25 was about 15 the 50 was about 25 the 100 was about 50 and the 200 was about 110 and both of them were like that because um, I noticed when I had the set first got it running I could see I could see a slight um Humbar, guy. I could see hum. I could see it, and it was, and also from the audio, there was a hell of a hum. I'm thinking, mm, that sounds like filter caps. Um, but uh, yeah, so and as I showed you before, in here, those four section caps just I've replaced with these ones. Just makes up the equivalent of the four sections. Just done it with these, these two here. So yeah, works fine. Looks a treat. A lot of these caps of um, new old stock ones that I've pulled out of things, you know, so I've got heaps of them, so I might as well use them up where I can. Make use of some of these parts that I've got, it's always handy. That one there was a 100 mic uh, smoothing cap that sits on the filament line, and let's replace with that sucker there. Um, there's your boost cap. Nice and stuffed. So, that's, yes, that's probably what actually stopped it going. And I know when these when these caps go, they stink, and boy, do they belch out some smoke. They really stink. It was, it was like fireworks. I remember I had, a, had one an old Philips ACDC radio. I remember as a kid, and I dragged, I dragged this at home from the tip, plugged it in, got it, plugged it in, and sort of, there was, there was crackling from the speaker, and then all of a sudden there's Bang! The boot exploded in my face and all this tar and shit went everywhere and boy it stunk. I think it was audio coupling cap or B plus bypass cap, something that went on it that was here. Yeah. As a kid it gave me a hell of a fright. So, <laughs> so I know about these caps going bang and they bloody stink. Um here's your point one mains filter cap. Hmm. So I changed that one. And um And both in another coupling cap to ground and line output stage. Change in as well. So, right, down to these valves. When I got it, uh, that valve was missing. That one there, that first IF was missing. And I'm pretty certain one of the, one of the Tudor ones is missing as well. So I replaced them and I replaced the things and brought it up on the Variac. And um, brought it up to about 200 volts, and there actually wasn't a hell of a lot going. There wasn't a hell of a lot actually working. Um, I could hear humming from the speaker, um, but uh, the, all the valves were lit, of course. But there wasn't it wasn't a lot working. There's no vertical. I couldn't hear the the vertical oscillator hadn't started up. There's no horizontal. I'm thinking to myself, hmm, that's rather strange. And measuring voltages around the horizontal and vertical drive and sync, they're all basically the B plus was there, but not much else was happening. All the voltages are a bit strange. And um, yeah, so replacing these two PCF 80s here. Um, which is V1. So V1 is, is it V1 or V11? Where are we? So V1 and V21. 
V1 is the line off slider, <laughs> of course. And the other one was V21, which is which is uh, frame sync. Um, this one, basically down here. So that one, and that one were crook. Um, I replaced those two. I then had EHT, but I had a, I still had, had a line across the screen. Um, so it turned out the PF86 had dirty contacts, gave it a wig, gave it a wiggle, and all of a sudden. The oscillator kicked into life, the, and she started up, and it had a picture on the screen, but couldn't really see much. Just this horrible white, washed-out snow. Um, so I started to poke around a bit more, and um, yeah, just the front end was really weak. I had, the, had the, my video, my uh, DVD player running through the RF modulator into it. No picture, because getting no picture or no sound. Um, So at that point, at that point, I thought, okay, maybe we've got crook valves. So I started testing all the valves, the IF panel, and I think I did find one. I think I did find the uh, second IF. That was basically that thing. Um, pretty much started flashing. Started measuring shorts the, the moment it warmed up. Um, so I replaced that, and um, I still had virtually no picture, just nothing. Just no sound, no picture, just a, just a faint washed out raster. So I thought, right, I better check the valves in the tuner. Got the PCF86, and hello, we have got another valve with uh, that was flashing and sparking and carrying on. Okay, so so I pulled one out of me, out of me, um, out of me valve bin, all the valves that were so called tested, and put it in. Turn the thing on. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sort of a little, sort of a, a little bit more happening there. And I was getting like little, getting little bloody bursts and flash and flashes of snow. And then, okay, and I was sort of sort of regular bases, and definitely was more was happening. And, um, and then all of a sudden, I could smell this burning smell. And I looked down to the tuner, and this resistor here was glowing red hot, like as you can see, it's it was cooked. It was glowing red hot, so I instantly pulled the power. And um, and investigated as to why. Now that resistor is on the tuner, um, which is this sucker. Um, this one right here comes off the B plus line. That's the resistor there that was glowing red hot, and. Um, so I thought to myself, oh, okay, obviously, obviously something inside here must be pulling the supply down. There's something, there's something inside the tuner breaking down. So, pulled the tuner out. Not a, a bit of a shit of a thing to get it open, actually. And you've got to undo this bracket and undo the bracket and take the channel, select the knob off, and everything. But for Lynn, of course, you've only, of course, the wires are in a certain length, so you, but you had to sort of swing the whole chassis out to get it all open and everything. And I'm looking inside. I found this. Hello, and the resistor looked nice and cooked. So I had a look where it was in the circuit. This one here, 3.3k, read about, reads, I think it actually reads, let me get my meter, I think it read, I think it read about, um, I think it read about 200 ohms or something. Right, we'll just have a look, see here, see what it reads, see what it, see what it currently reads. Hang on a second, guys, I'll just get the meter in a better, better, better place. Yes, why I'm just trying to get me to across it. And there we are. 281 ohms. <laughs> it's meant to be 3.3k. Ah, oh, bingo! Found the bastard. So, replace that resistor. Put the power on. Measured the voltage at that test point there. The voltage started dropping. And that, resistor, and that, re that new resistor started smoking. I thought, oh, crap. What on earth's going on here? So I turned off again. I thought, right, well, there must be something. Crook and salt the tuner. So I spent ages measuring all these components in here and checking all the coils and everything. It was bloody real fiddly. And um, I checked all these other ones here where I could with the meter. And powered on again. And... Um, 
because I thought I just maybe I thought there was something shorting or touching and so I powered the thing on again, set warmed up, and um, I got snow on the screen. So oh okay, I got I did get something happening. And then all of a sudden, um, I must have, I think I was, yeah, yeah, that's right, I, I, um, I had a go and I tapped the valve socket, so all of a sudden, picture went away, and we had smoke again on that. Right, okay, there's something definitely weird going on here. So I thought to myself, alright, I'll, um, that valve I changed, hmm, I wonder if that valve was crook. <laughs> so, I put another valve in it. And I fixed it. So the so-called valve that was so-called good must have had an internal short somewhere. This piece, so, so the new PC, the new PCF86 I put in was also a crook, but I tested okay on my valve tester. Um, well, actually, I've got a um, which is weird because um, I'll be I was um, at that stage I was using a basic emission tester, a BNK one. Um, actually, this one here is actually what I was using. And um, this is what I was using when I tested all my TV valves years and years ago. Um, this is the tester I was using at the time. This one here. That's what I was using at the time to test valves. About sort of nine, ten years ago. But um, yeah, I put that valve back in this back in this test and checked it and it still checks fine chucked on my AVO bang instant short so yeah obviously must have been a couple of elements to make sure that obviously this one wasn't picking up on and uh, yeah so would you, would you believe it eh so <laughs> the valve which was supposedly tested as being good ended up being faulty as well so yeah um, that was a good fault I said if I hadn't have, if I hadn't have actually have tapped tapped these and saw all of a sudden saw the pigeon go away and, and that resistor the bloody heat up again I probably would have I would probably would have actually have changed the tuner because I've got plenty of spare tuners um, in my in my spare parts but um that was sort of last sort of last resort sort of thing um, yeah so that was a good fault and um, what other problems would I have with it um Occasionally from cold the picture would flash and flicker and pop and carry on and the, the vertical would jump and flicker and carry on and uh, Yeah, um, I found by tapping the PCL85 like the picture gold berserk and the PCL85 which um, Which does stun the blanking I found tapping that from cold make the picture flash so I went through and tested all the valves and sure enough <laughs> They are the, these are all, com, all all these these ones here were all completely crooked, so they got all changed. So yeah, definitely quite a few good fault to this one actually. It's uh, but that seems to be working quite seems to be working quite well now. Um, yeah, so I think what I'll do is show you it running. There's some other caps too I changed as well. Um, I have on um, one of my other S8s I've got the other room which I've had for some years. Uh, um, I had problems with vertical and had vertical and audio issues and things and um, a few of these caps were leaky so I changed them and uh, yes yeah, so I just sort of do a blanket replacement on those and put new ones in there, some quite quite niche con ones in there. And um, yeah, it all seems to be seems to be going quite well. So, you know, they definitely didn't really make an improvement on the picture, but well, I suppose for for reliability person, the fact that the set's been out of action for probably quite a few years, preventive maintenance just changes the you know, course course of um course of f fixing the thing. Okay, I think I've done enough waffling on here. Um, yeah, I guess now I'll show you the set running.